In this video, we'll be creating a C-sharp application using Redis as our backing store for our data. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull up the terminal. And we want to start our server. So we're going to say Redis server forward slash conf, just like in the previous video. Our server has started. Now we want to say um, we want to get into the CLI. And we want to run this new command. It's called monitor. And this is monitoring everything that's happening with our database. Cool. So now we want to go ahead and get started with our C Sharp app. So we're going to go ahead and pull up Mono Develop. And we want to create a new solution. It's a C Sharp application. And for this example, it's just going to be a console app. And we're going to call it Hello um, Redis. So now we're going to go browse. And we just want to save it to my desktop. Looks good. Uh, that looks fine to me. Okay, so now that you have done this part, we're actually going to go over to um, the Redis website and we're going to go over to clients. So they have many clients depending on whatever language you're using. So if you're using C or C++ or I mean any of these other different languages, Go or whatever it might be. But for this example, we're going to be doing C Sharp. There's multiple different clients developed by the community. And um, for C Sharp, the most popular one is called Service Stack Redis. So if you click here on home page, it will take you to the GitHub page where um, they have the source code for this for this client. So in order for you to actually install this and um, getting it working on your um, mono develop environment or wherever you might be developing. If you're using Visual Studio, it's a little bit easier, but with mono develop, you can get it to work. And there's a, on the blog post I actually wrote a little bit of a snippet that can actually help you on how to do that. So if you go to service stack.net from their GitHub page, it will show you um, what exactly it does. So if you go to download, it will tell you what you need to install. So you need to install the service install package service stack server but the cool thing is is if you have nuggets installed in your mono develop environment all you have to do is right click on your project click um manage nugget packages and then okay so now in here we're going to go ahead and type in redis and here it is c sharp redis client for redis and if you can see right here the id is a service stack redis so if you actually click on that it will actually take you to right here to the actual command that's actually going to run in the background and um yeah it's pretty much the same thing as this one install service stack server redis okay so um after you click on it you click add it will add the dependencies to your project and um click okay and you're pretty much ready to go. So if you go on here, you click on references, you can actually see all the DLLs that are added. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our main project here that pretty much says hello world. Um, get rid of this. And we're going to go ahead and um, get started. So this is going to be a very simple app. I just want to get you familiarized with um, how you would actually use this in some C Sharp code. So you would go using. And we are going to be using a var, var, and we're just going to call it Redis. And we're going to go say equals new Redis. New Redis. Client. There you go. And it's going to be complaining right now that it has doesn't know what this is. So we're going to go ahead and import that. So now we have that. We're going to create another var. We're going to call this one um, we're going to call this one um, doo -doo -doo. we should probably call it uh, Redis users users equals redis dot as whatever you want your data structure to be so in this example we're just going to call it 
person, which is a class that we have not created. So let's go ahead and make that class real quick. So public class and person. And um, this person class is going to have two public fields, public long ID, and it's going to have public getters and public setters. So back over here, public um, string, and then we're going to give it a name. And it's also going to have a get and a set. Perfect. So um, we want to go ahead and add in a couple persons into this data structure. So we're going to say var rick equals new person, right? I'm, I'm a person. And then we're going to do um, ID. ID is equal to um, Redis users dot get next sequence. So it will just give us whatever's next in the sequence. And then we're going to do um, name as our next property, which we're going to say um, my name is Rick at code with intent. Cool. So now that we have that, we want to um, probably do a semicolon here at the end. And we're going to go ahead and add another one. We're going to call this one var. We're going to call this one Becky equals new person. And then ID, same thing again, equals Redis users dot get next sequence. And name is going to be um, same thing, Becky at Becky.com. Okay, so you semicolon, and that should be good. So now, the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, actually store these into our database. So if we pull up the terminal right here, I'm going to put it here at the bottom so you guys can see that we're actually still monitoring the database. So let me squeeze this up a little bit more. And yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and... Um, put these new users into our database. So we're going to say Redis users dot store and we're going to go ahead and store um, Rick and then Redis Redis users dot store and we're going to go ahead and store Becky. Oops, there we go, Becky. Okay. We added those two users into our data structure, so now we want to probably um, print them all out. So we can go say var, and we're going to say all the people is equal to Redis dot, oops, Redis users, because that's our data structures, and we want to say get all. And this will return back all, everything that was inside my data structure in JSON format. So we probably want to go ahead and print that out to the console. Console dot right line. And we want to print out all the people. And we want to probably print all the people with a dump. Just to make sure that actually gets um. And this is not going to be recognized because we need to import another another service stack called text. Okay, so now that that's done. So hopefully this will get added to our database, um, store Rick and Becky into the system, and right here on our monitor is going to get um, printed out, which whatever is going to get added to the database. So if I do Command-Shift-R to run this, should run it. So here's the database. So um, right here you can see that we have ID 1, and it's Rick at Code with Intent. And ID2 is Becky at Becky.com. And as you can see down here, we have a set, add, s add, s members, m get. So um, all these commands ran, and the C sharp client took care of running those commands for us. So we no longer have to worry about exactly how that's actually happening. So there's a little bit of abstraction going on. So now to prove that these are actually in the in the database. We're going to come back over here, and we're going to um, go into the CLI, and we want to say um, keys star. This will return all the keys inside there. 
So um, if you want to do, if you want to look at one of them, you do get URN person and whatever the key is, which is this long thing. So come back over here. And then it returns you back um, the ID, which is two, the name, which is Becky, and at Becky.com, at Bessie.com, which I misspelled. So if you want to get, get the other person, um, you pretty much copy the key again, and you do get there. So now we have ID one, name Rick, at code with intent. So there you have it. Uh, we went ahead and created a C Sharp application. We used the client for the C Sharp language. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, follow me on Twitter because I do tweet out every time I make a new video. Uh, I do tweet it out so you can actually watch the video instantly after I tweet it. We'll see you in the next one.